Hello, it's Kei, and I'm an individual forex trader based in Tokyo, Japan, and welcome back to my another video. Uh, this is a part three of money management, and in this video, I'll be talking about the correct position sizing and correct lot sizing to trade, as well as the position sizing on each trade, because this is one of the most frequently asked questions to me. Um, like, um, I get questions like, what is the correct position sizing? or uh, other ones are like, um, what risk should I take on each trade and on and on. And to be honest, it depends on where you enter and it also depending on how much you have. And I will be talking about the golden rules that I apply in my daily tradings. And no matter how much you have, this is something that you can still apply to your daily trades. So if you like this topic already, uh, please press a good button and make sure to subscribe and hit the bell so that you get notifications for my future Forex educational videos and live streamings. So let's begin. So let me ask you a question. Are you trading with the correct position sizing? How you determine the position sizing on each trade? For example, when someone says, I bought a pound dollar with 0.1 lot, right? And I ask, all right, so why you placed 0.1 lot? Then he goes, I placed relatively smaller lot because that way I can avoid the risk. And to me, it's not how you avoid the risk because it's not logical enough. So here's the logic I use. Let's say when there's a market like this, this is from the actual chart. Uh, this is uh, US dollar JPN in one hour time frame. And I'm actually selling on this pair right now. So let me explain this from my real trade, right? So first of all, when you look at the market, is it in a trend or is it in a range consolidation? Just by looking at this chart, which one is it? Trend or consolidation? Uh, well, to me, this is in a range consolidation. You can draw resistance line here and support line here. Also, you can draw a line here too. So uh, first thing you want to recognize is that this is in a range market. You know, the candles are interacting with Kumo and the price are resisted and supported by Bollinger Bands, upper side and lower side of deviations. And MA, moving average, is going up and down. So you can see that basically the price keeps bouncing up and down within the range. And that's one thing you can instantly recognize when you see this chart. So most likely when the price touches the upper line, then there will be a chance that the price will be resisted next time again and comes back down. And when you actually look at the daily time frame, there's a resistance here also uh, in this July around this price level. And that's why I placed sell here yesterday and still holding it as of October 25th, uh, which is the day that I'm recording this video right now. So the next question is, what position size should I go for? What position size, right? Uh, let me tell you how. Um, first of all, it depends on how much of risk you want to take for this particular trade. Uh, let's say you have $1,000 capital and trading this pair. And let's say you want the risk to be 2% uh, for this trade. Well, how you can come up with the 2% is when you see this chart pattern and based on your knowledge and past experience, if you think the price will most likely drop from this price level, you can go aggressively, like trading uh, with 5% uh, of risk and go short, right? But if you think uh, there's a resistance here, but still think that there is a possibility of breaking it upwards, then you need to cut the risk to 2% or even 1% because you also expect the price to go upwards. Well, to me, I think uh, from this momentum of the chart and from this chart pattern, uh, there's a possibility of the price to break the line upwards. So uh, the, the risk I'm taking is very low on this trade. Um, so anyways, here is a rule first. Uh, determine how much of risk you want to take on that trade, depending on the strategy you are using. Uh, when it's your favorable chart pattern or signals, then you can go up to like, you know, 5% of risk. But if you're not confident enough, uh, you drop the risk as low as like 1% or 2%, right? 
and this should be based on your chart reading techniques. So again, as I look at the chart and I think it's a right timing for sell, but in this case, I still think that the price should be breaking the line upwards as well. Um, you know, it's also in my expectation as far as I look at this market environment. So let's say I decide to take only 1% of risk on this trade, right? So the next question is, how do I determine the lot sizing, right? Uh, do I go for 0.1 lot, 0.05 lot, or like one lot, right? Which one should I choose? Uh, well, it depends on where you place the stop loss, and it should be also done by your chart reading techniques. This is also a very important step because if you cannot read the chart and spot the right place for your stop loss, then you cannot come up with the correct lot sizing. In this case, I placed the stop loss here and there are a couple of reasons why it's at this level. Uh, first of all, uh, like I said, there's a resistance line here, right? So um, when the price touches at this level next time, uh, there's a chance that the price will be resisted at this level and comes back down again and keeps going downwards. The second reason is that if you look at this weak pointing upwards, you can see that the resistance at this recent high is pretty strong. And not only it's got the weak, you know, uh, from this candle, the I wave broke the recent low downwards, you see? And this is another proof uh, from the chart that the resistance here is quite strong because it broke the recent low downwards. And that was the second reason why I think the price will be resisted here when it touches this upper line next time. Also, if you look in the past, uh, there were several rejections at this price level, uh, at these pl places, and this this also makes me the price uh, to be resisted at this level next time. So based on those three major reasons, I placed the stop loss slightly above the wick uh, because when the price breaks the resistance level upwards, most likely it can be a start of a new bullish trend. Uh, you know, uh, so that that means uh, even when I lose this trade, it still teaches me and tells me it's going to be a trend reverse. And because I can get that message from the market, even if it goes up you know, afterwards, I would think it's a good loss, right? So I placed the stop loss here. And here's the third step, how you come up with the correct lot sizing. Once you decide where to place a stop loss, then you measure the pips to the stop loss, you know, how many pips to the stop loss. And when I do, I find it 10 pips here. Now, you need to do some calculation. Let's say you have $1,000 capital and you only want to take 2% of risk on this trade and you set 10 pips to the stop loss, you know? So that means you set the risk to be 10 pips on this particular trade. So what is the lot sizing? What is the correct lot sizing you need to go for when your capital is $1,000? Let me explain step by step here politely, okay? When you have $1,000 capital and if you want to take a risk of 2% on this particular trade, then the risk of how much you are taking is going to be $20, right? 2% of $1,000 is going to be $20. Now, the next question is, what is the lot sizing for 10 pips by $20? When the market moves 10 pips and when you lose $20 from that 10 pips, what is the lot sizing is going to be on this uh, dollar yen. To get this, you need to know the relationship between lot size, pips, and the amount of money. For those who are new, I just, uh, you know, just remember this formula. When you have one lot, then you get $10 when the market moves one pip, right? In other words, when you have a position size of one lot, when the market moves one pip, then you get $10, right? This is the basic formula. So what if you go for 0.1 lot and the market moves one pip? How much of value would that be when you go for 0.1 lot and the market moves one pip? Um, it's going to be a dollar, right? So how about this? How about when the market moves 10 pips and when you get $20, right? How many lots would that be? How many lot size would that be? And here I will just tell you the answer. Uh, it's going to be 0.2 lot. If you go for 0.2 lot, then when the price goes backwards to 10 pips, 
then you get $20 of loss. And it's going to be 2% of your $1,000 capital. Do you understand? If you don't understand this, watch this part over and over again to fully understand this because this is very, very important for your risk management. I will put the formula on the description below so you can apply it to yourself, right? Um, so this is how you get the correct position sizing. Again, if you have $1,000 and if you want to take 2% of risk on this particular trade and when you find the stop loss to be 10 pips, then the correct lot sizing for you is going to be 0.2 lot. However, if you think the market is going down and if you are positive uh, based on your knowledge and past experience and when you decide to take a risk of 5% on that trade, let's say, uh, then that means you take a risk of $50 on this particular trade. And in that case, the correct lot sizing for that trade is going to be 0.5 lot. Or if you want to take a risk of only 1%, then it's going to be 0.1 lot, okay? So depending on the circumstance, your lot sizing should be changed. And this is exactly how I manage my positions each trade. Uh, like I said on my previous video, usually I take 2% of risk on each trade and if you look at my positions in the past, uh, you might think they are relatively big, right? Uh, like sometimes I go for 5 lots or 10 lots or sometimes I even go for like 50 lots. Uh, but now you know, that's because I have a big capital of over $100,000 each month and also this is more important but also, the loss cut of my entries are very tight every time. Like, I only look for where the loss cut can be only 10 pips or 20 pips at most, but still expect high reward of more than 80 pips in average. And that's why I can go for big lot sizing, uh, because still, my loss is going to be just like 2% of my capital in average on each trade. If you do the math, then you know reasonably how small my each positions are. And it's okay when I get lost as a result because it always tells me that uh, there is a change in the momentum of the market every time I get lost cut. But the thing is, I manage the risk on each trade and by doing this, I grow my account each month and be able to make my living like this. And this is the reason why money management is so important because if you don't know all these, like how to come up with the correct lot sizing on each trade depending on your capital, uh, if you don't know these, no matter how good the strategy is, when you get lost, it's going to be huge and you blow up your account just one time. I remember on my previous video on part 2, I explained by the examples of green balls and red balls, right? If you haven't watched it, that link is on the upper right corner now or it will be on the description below. Uh, but even if your winning rate is like 80%, uh, when you get a loss without this money management strategy, your account is going to be blown up easily because when you get lost, it's going to be much bigger than the total amount of gain you have. So at first, this might be a bit of pain for you to calculate the lot sizing like this every time you take a position. but when you are used to this, then you can just do it automatically in your head like you breathe every day, right? But it literally saves your life. So every time you look at the chart and every time you imagine where to place buy or sell, always, you know, always decide where to place the stop loss first. Then you get that pips uh, to the stop loss and calculate the percentage risk you are taking based on your capital and do this over and over and get used to it because uh, you know what, this technique is truly more important than all the technical analysis or winning rate because if you're good at position sizing and risk management, then even if your winning rate is like 30%, uh, you can still grow your account. Actually, there's a statistic proof for that and I will show it to you sometime. And of course, if you combine it with your technical analysis, then you will not only be able to increase your winning rate and max profit, but you can also secure and grow your capital in the long run. Alright, thank you for watching until the end. If you liked today's video, please press a good button so that it keeps me going. And from the next video, like I announced earlier from the next video in November, I will be talking about price actions like candlesticks and chart patterns of the market. 
Uh, there will be eight videos total. You know, we have four Mondays and four Thursdays. So total eight videos. I will be explaining all about price action trading strategies uh, that I'm currently using. So if you don't want to miss those videos and I do live streamings every Tuesday and Friday. So if you don't want to miss those lives, please make sure to subscribe and hit the bell so that you get notifications, right? Again, thank you for watching until the end and thank you for your support as always. I will see you on the next one. Stay gold. Mata ne.